Welcome back to some more Clash Royale. 2v2 decks that never get old. I am super excited to share this one with you guys. You can already see it on the screen. And it is triple building. What in the world? <laughs> so I wanted to make... So as of right now, I believe the first three of these episodes have all been unique decks. Like I have created them to my knowledge. I don't know millions of players they all make different decks so i'm sure somebody's played with this before but so this is i created this and i it's just you know you see a lot of um goblin hunt and furnace with royal giant decks and oh well in the pro scene at least um crl west has been having uh, a little bit of goblin hut in there with the furnace and i just thought for spawners they are the two most annoying the goblin hut has a lot of health and obviously the spear goblins can help add up and it's really obnoxious to deal with and obviously the furnace has the fire spirits that do a ton of damage if they can connect to tower and also their splash damage units which hit the air and the ground so these two buildings if put together can amount to a lot of pressure and a lot to deal with it's easy zap bait it's easy log bait and so yeah and then i threw the mortar in there i thought well if i'm using all these buildings why not use another one the mortar helps counter their spawners as well as the earthquake and that's basically what i go for the mortar isn't always a um, offensive troop in this deck it is used as a defense um, but it's used as a defense that helps even apply even more pressure to the other side and you'll see that um, when we start playing so the only legendary in this deck is the royal ghost and the only reason for that is he wasn't in there initially um, the only reason I have him in there is because he's really obnoxious in spawner decks. Um, the fact that he goes invisible is really great because he slips right in, right under with all the other troops that are piling up. And he will always, almost always connect to the tower, um, obviously, if he's undisturbed. So while they're busy dealing with um, the spawners and um, the mortar, you can slip the royal ghost in. He's great on defense. He does air, uh, AoE. So that's really helpful area of effect. Sorry. The swap that I would do for him would probably be guards or archers. Um, those would be probably like runners up. I think the best choice though would be the Valkyrie. He's really there to help um, take out supporting troops and their pushes. The ice golem's a great distraction. The bar barrel's great. The ice spirit's great. Um, they're a really great cycle cards. You'll see this is a very fast deck and the royal uh royal ghost there does a lot to help with that but i would say probably the valkyrie um or those other cards whatever's highest level for you whatever you're most comfortable with that's exactly what i would go with so we're gonna rock into 2v2 i absolutely love this deck because with any spawner deck you basically play your side of the field you, you can cover up the whole top half it doesn't really matter it's just helpful to see what's coming at you and basically the idea behind this is to just okay they probably have a freeze since they went so aggressive. I'm going to Furnace out back. Hopefully it doesn't take too many shots. Bandit. Oh, Bandit would also be a great idea instead of Royal Ghost. And they went hard on their offense. So we're going to have a pretty decent attack here. Counter attack. And here we go. Just going to... This, this is basically the placement that I will always do. Uh, oops, I had, thought I had the barbell selected. These are the placements of the huts that I usually do um, because the furnace in the back, it's one elixir less, so if they do rocket it or whatever um, and hit the tower as well, they're not getting as much value. Wow, look at the look at them already doing their job. The skeleton army crushing that tower. It's not often that you see that. Holy moly. So yeah, then we just, okay, we're going the other way. Let's go the other way. <laughs> That's it. That's all you do. So... Yeah, I like putting the furnace in the back and the uh, goblin hut in the middle because if they if they want to rocket the goblin hut, they're going to take a negative elixir trade and they cannot hit the tower. And yeah, so that's basically it. We're just going to keep these suckers up. That is the main goal is to keep these huts up at all times. And then we do have the mortar to play as our defense. So when they come in with the hog, hopefully we'll have enough elixir to put the mortar down up top near the river. And look at that, we already almost have two towers. I'm, I'm talking, I'm not even looking at the, the game hardly at all. We're gonna take that tower. I think maybe one of them gave up. Maybe one of them left, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe not, maybe not. They did just play the Mega Knight. But if they don't support it, then probably. No, they're probably still there. I don't know, <laughs> it's not double elixir yet, so yeah. And we're just gonna keep these buildings up. 
So at this point, we have two towers. It's fine if they take one. Um, but that just means we go for the three crown. So I'm not super worried about it. I haven't seen the freeze yet, which is weird. Goblin Hunt ran out. Guess what? Another one. Another one. DJ Khaled, please come in. Another one. Another one. Ram Rider is difficult, but we do have the Skeleton Army for it. If not, I mean, I guess I might have had the Mortar in time. I don't know. I'm playing kind of reckless. You don't want to put a hut down <laughs> um, as soon as you have the monies for it. You definitely don't want to be caught empty-handed or with your pants down, as they say, down in um, London. And so now we have the Mortar in a defensive position here because obviously we can't hit any towers anyways, so what the heck. And we just won pretty wholeheartedly. We weren't even close to getting our second tower. Um, I don't even know if they would have gotten the first tower. So, good game. Well played. So I think this is this is definitely beatable. I lose all the time with this deck, but it's just a lot of fun to mess around with because it's not something that you would ordinarily play or see played. It almost looks like it's two, pers two different people's decks. Which is what I really like about it. My partner is not playing anything, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, he's so late to the party. Almost a one-person defense, and we suffer for it. Holy cow. Get off your phone if you're watching TV. Trying to record. We're just going to Earthquake to take out. You cannot see the Earthquake on my phone. Like, you can't see the parameter of it, or the diameter of it, or the surrounding of it, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we are failing at our spawner deck right now because we don't have any spawners down, and that's frustrating. Because this is exactly what you don't want to do with a spawner deck. You don't ever, like, your, your whole objective is to have spawners down, to invest in the long-term game. We did get some really good damage on the left-hand side, which I don't think we, got, we would have gotten with the Valkyrie. And now I'm gonna, going to set up here. I did exactly what I said I wouldn't do, and I put the furnace in the middle, but that's because I don't think I'm gonna get the Spear Goblin hut down, if at all. And now we're gonna go aggressive with the mortar at the bridge. We do have the Mega Knight there, and we have the Ice Spirit to do stuff as well. So the mortar is gonna help on defense. That Night Witch, please go down. She does spawn a bunch of bats, but that's okay. Fire Spirits are coming in. Bam, 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 bam. We play bats at the bridge. Prince at the bridge to counter the magic archer. Meh. They're probably going to skeleton army that. And the fire spirits are coming in. A nice little trade there. Block the miner. Hopefully, maybe, probably. Skeletons die. Awesome. And now I'm going to furnish in the back. Going to mortar up front. Help pull that thing over. They Tesla on the right hand side. That's really interesting, actually. I'm going to keep putting my huts on the right hand side because our tower is so low and we're going to need those troops to help on defense. The mortar is getting some shots into the tower so I'm going to ice beard at the bridge. It actually stops the bomber as well. We get another shot off with the mortar. That's very good. Mega Knight goes down because why would you run something like that and not have a zap or a log? Or maybe he does have a log and I just didn't see it. Derp. And Miner's going to target the furnace which is nice for us if it dies. Hello? Still gonna get a shot under the tower, that is sad. And they're gonna Tesla, but it is not a good counter for the mortar because it's down. The mortar is gonna lock onto the tower and we are gonna graveyard, uh, graveyard. We're gonna earthquake the tower for tower damage and hit the Tesla. The mortar is doing its best. One more shot, the fireball is late. Feels bad, feels bad. Um, that was definitely within our reach. I didn't see my partner's elixir i think that fireball definitely could have come out earlier he definitely could have helped me in the beginning <laughs> um so that early tower damage really sucked and got us in the butt but that's okay because this deck is fun and we play it all the time anyways good luck there you go there you go i just think that this is really fun and actually if you want to play something else um you can play the furnace up um up high in reaction to hog riders or giants or whatever that is an interesting witch because if they have something they will hit us they do and they hit us awesome my buddy has a furnace as well this is really fun because we are gonna stack up you, you should have played it one back my dude but uh that's okay i'll just go here this is gonna really stack up on these uh these dudes here i'm gonna play this up high we missed the pull on the night but that's okay 
You're gonna go straight in with the hog runner. That was an interesting <laughs> bar barrel. And he drops the oops. Feels bad. That's okay. Spawners are up. The spawners are up. And now we defend. The fireball comes in onto the furnace, which is fine. My partner does have a furnace as well. The wizard is going to be an issue. He looks like he's going to drop his elite barbs. Hello? Do it. Hello? I'm just going to mortar to take out the princess because she's annoying. And a naked rocket onto the tower. My friend, you are overconfident. Why would you do that to me? In single elixir, no less. Oh my goodness. And they're going in hard with the hog rider. Luckily, we do have the witch. He's going to rage up on defense. Very interesting, actually. Hog Rider gets not even close. And I really wish my barbarian would have stayed alive there. But that's okay. Hopefully, this prince will go down. Definitely will with the furnace down. Furnace is going to take one shot, but not a charge. And the knight is going to die as well. So we're not looking too great on tower damage. They're basically just um, using their fireballs to connect. I don't think the hog's gotten a swing in yet. So we're going to build up. We're in double elixir now. We have all of our buildings in hand. If they fireball the furnace, we drop the goblin hut. They're not fireballing the furnace. They're gonna arrow the furnace, interesting. We'll go with the goblin hut here. Getting some damage onto the tower still already. Mortar up high to help, help take care of the princess and the wizard. And we have the barb barrel for if they come in at us as well as the, oh my goodness. Nice, the wizard looks over and takes a slap in the face on that minion horde. And good luck, because you BM'd us, I think. And I'm going to give it right back to you. And we just, I don't even know, just assault the right-hand side. And the clone comes in on the left, and this is going to be a three crowd. Holy crap, the arrows come down, but it's not enough. The witch is there, the goblins are there, and we got it. Oh yeah, good game, bandit scream. Uh, well played. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I don't know. It's just, it's just spawner spam, man. It's just spawner spam. I, I want somebody else to play a spawner. Because the reason I have the earthquake and the mortar in this deck officially is to counter spawners. It's a spawner deck that counters spawner decks. Without having the bomber or baby dragon or ice wizard tornado, we're countering the buildings themselves and not the spam that they create. And the Earthquake is so good for that, especially if my partner has a Hog Rider or... Wow! Wow! What is going on? What? Did they clone the gra... What is going on? Why? Why? Why would you fireball nothing? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what? What is going on? We're defending surprisingly well, and as soon as I say that, we take brutal damage. What the heck? I think my teammate is throwing. He must be a fan. He must recognize the name. He must have seen my deck and thought I was trolling. I'm not really sure. That was a decent fireball. Where was that? Where was that? They're mocking us. Oh my goodness. Sparky's gonna get a shot in. The mirrored fireball on the almost dead Sparky. I don't know if we can come back from this. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be blunt about this I don't think we can come back at all but you know what we're gonna try and we're gonna do it in darnest spawner fashion here we go double spawners down the arrows fly I don't even know my dude is your daughter playing is your son playing <laughs> we're gonna pull the golem oh no we didn't even pull the golem pulled everything but the golem this is bad. This is not good. Battle Ram goes down, but the Golem death damage does come in on the tower. The mirrored Skarmy could save our lives. The clone comes in, and this is a very fast three crit. Very fast. I had an accent for a second because of the pressure. 
What is? Why would you do that? Why would? Why would I? I don't know. Just end it. Just end it. Good luck. <laughs> Perfect emote for that game. Holy. Oh my goodness. You know what? One more. I'm not ending it on some kid who's gonna just, I don't know, throw spells at the floor. I want a building. I want to face somebody with an inferno tower or, you know, an expo or Wi-Fi bars. That's cool too. I like that. Okay. Starting in the back. And I don't have a lightning or anything. They probably would have used it. Valkyrie at the bridge. Nice. Goblin gang into the executioner. That's interesting. They are really piling up here. Holy crap. Fight them at the bridge, I guess. Don't wait for them to come to our side. That's fine. Wizard goes down. That's the main threat anyways. And we are back into the spawner game. Both spawners are down. Have two more buildings in hand. That's what I love about this deck. Even in single elixir time, we have a very fast cycle to be able to get all these buildings down. Lava Hound at the bridge. I'm very scared. You know what? Let's let's bait something. Let's double up the buildings. Double them bad boys up. He does have a clone. He has a mirror as well. I've actually seen a deck similar to this. With the uh, they lava hound in the back, and then they lava hound again at the bridge, and then they clone <laughs> both their own lava hounds, which is fun. Maybe it's a deck that never gets old. You're gonna. You're gonna me- Oh no! Oh no, we are at a disadvantage here. The- the double scar me, and then pull him all the way over. The double scar me, and then the clone into a Mega Knight! You can't- you can't make this stuff up, alright? You just don't see it. The pros are not playing this way. And we, as you should know, as a Clash Royale player, should always be emulating the pros. We should only be playing the six decks that they play. I don't know where I'm going with this. You just, you don't see these kind of mishaps. You, you just, yeah. We're gonna lose a tower. And there it goes. We've done absolutely nothing to their towers. So that's fun. Um, let's mortar. Oh, I forgot he has Skarmy. Oh, well, it's okay that this log came down because guess what, another one. More Skarmies. My friend here should be, uh, should be watching my, my 2v2 decks that never get old series because, well, they don't get old, so. Lava Hound at the bridge. Let's go aggressive. I'm gonna do one more. I mean, I don't know, that was pretty quick, right? Good luck. We will not lose. This is a spawner deck. Get the spawners down, worry about your side of the field. Don't even worry about your teammate, okay? That's what I say. Who cares what they do? Ah, a building! But he has a P.E.K.K.A., so I don't know. Right. We're just gonna play the defensive mortar. It's gonna be able to hit all these ground troops. Gonna distract the wizard and the bomber with the ice golem. They're at the bridge. Bo uh, mortar's gonna get one more shot in on them, help take them out. The bandit is gonna get a nice charge onto the, you know, whatever her name is. And then onto the musketeer. That is absolutely amazing and we can get another spawner down. And as soon as this goblin one goes down, another one. Valkyrie at the bridge to help answer the musketeer and now she is backed by one spear goblin. Also, they have a cannon, awesome. So we're gonna get the uh, the use of the uh, earthquake spell here. I don't even know if I said why I use the earthquake spell. I use it to help counter buildings, but also if my partner has a win condition, that they keep playing an inferno tower or something. Also, it's actually really good for just tower damage. If you get into um, double elixir overtime and you have to spell cycle them, it's uh, it's pretty handy to have a earthquake because you can usually get a lot of value either hitting troops or hitting the tower and uh, a building, anything like that. So as soon as we get the second furnace down, I'm gonna play the mortar because that's basically how you play this deck. You get the, the spawners down and then you apply even more pressure or you defend with the mortar. Coming into double elixir is when we will drop that bead on our opponents. A whole lot of nothing has happened so far. Mortar high to help pull the hog. And this is nice because the hog rider is getting swings and is distracted. But we are also getting shots back with the mortar. 
Spear Goblin Hut goes down, so guess what? Uh, another one. Princess is gonna die, that is amazing, and heck yeah, let's go in with the Earthquake. Show them what you got, boy. Spear Goblins are gonna get some shots onto the tower. Bomber does come down, as well as the Wizard. We do have another Furnace when this one dies, and we also have an Invisible Royal Ghost to help assassinate these fools. Uh, Magic Archer in the back, so I'm gonna play a Mortar up high to help counter the troops walking forward, as well as if they hog, it's gonna lock onto the Musketeer, which is awesome. Another Furnace in the back, and this is how you play this deck. You stay in control the, in the entire time because of pressure from the Goblin Hut, from the, uh, from the Furnace, and you're able to pull ahead because they are stuck defending the entire time. I'm just gonna Earthquake these buildings. Hopefully a Tesla doesn't go down. Well, it, I mean, it goes down, but... All right, so now we have to now we have to start doing damage though. We're not we're not doing it. We're not we're doing good, but we're not doing our job. We're doing our job, but we're not doing it good, if you know what I mean. So here's our chance. Wizard is still alive. Wizard is now oh, still alive. Amazing. And the prediction of the cannon is there, but it is not. Bandit is going to get one shot under the tower. Spear goblins are there as well. Mortar is still getting shots under the tower. Uh, amazing, a second, third, whatever that was. All right, and we deal with the support troops with the Royal Ghost. Also would work just fine with the Valkyrie. And we build up another Spear Goblin Hut because this one's about to go down. Pekka is a great counter for the other Pekka there, whatever its name is. Um, the Mega Knight, there it is. Ice Spirit down, takes out the Musketeer just for a second. And we mortar up high, help distract. The Hog Rider can't even get there. And the mortar's gonna lock onto the tower. Awesome. So good. And both our spawners are up and well. Mortar's getting some more shots onto the goodness. We're gonna earthquake, hitting the cannon, the princess, and the tower for some nasty value. The goblins get some stabs onto the tower. Heck yeah, this is what I like to see. And now at this point, we can spell cycle. We can just rotate back to our earthquake spell and do more damage but i'm gonna play two more buildings almost all back to back and we do have the mortar again they keep playing troops in the back i'm not really sure they're not exactly distracting the mortar but they kind of are they just did there and that was well played by them ice spirit to help take out the hog mortar does go down ice spirit takes out the other hog goblins don't get any swings on the tower but two more earthquakes and we win this over time with one minute left Keep up the pressure with the buildings. That is what is succeeding our victory. That is what is causing our success. That is what is happening. All right, I'm gonna go with, I like playing a mortar over here because they really have to commit to the right hand lane to take it out. Just kidding, they have the princess. Just kidding, she died. And the mortar's gonna help take out everything on the left that they play at us. It's not gonna target the cannon, but what the heck even hit the building? Was it just the earthquake? Good luck, good game, well played. And there it is, it's a ton of fun. Well, I think it's a ton of fun. That's so biased. I'm sorry. Try it out for yourselves. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know if you think that I should have gone in and changed out the Valkyrie for the Royal Ghost. If you guys would have thought that was uh, beneficial to see that, how that would have changed the gameplay. It wouldn't have changed a whole lot in this case, but um, maybe some of those matchups would have been different. Maybe a little bit closer. Maybe they would have been losses. Maybe they would have been wins. I don't really know. But uh, that is going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know if you like the deck. Stay tuned for more. Until next time, God bless. Stay hydrated.